Hello friends, my name is Jack Treber. I'm the pastor of the great North Valley Baptist Church in Santa Clara, California. My wife and I came here 45 years ago and God has uh, richly blessed us for which I'm grateful. I'm in the auditorium, the great auditorium of the people of North Valley, uh, auditorium that seats 3,000 people. Uh, God's given us a great ministry, but our ministry like yours has been affected over the last about 24 weeks. Uh, 24 weeks ago, we were instructed to completely shut down. And we did that. We heard of this thing that we've not heard before, COVID-19. And it entered into our society and we wanted to err on the side of safety. So we, we shut down everything. And uh, we closed down as we were instructed. It said two weeks. We closed our Christian school, K-4 through 12th grade. Uh, we closed our college that's training young men and women for the glory of God come here from all over the country and outside of the United States. Uh, we closed our bus ministry. Our bus ministry has been going throughout this entire valley for 45 years, picking up boys and girls and men and women. Uh, we just invested $1.5 million in new vehicles uh, for these young people. In 45 years, we've picked up 1.5 million riders, brought them to the house of God. 24 weeks, they've not come to church. Those little children and parents literally are weeping. We'll go see them at the door and uh, those children say, I want to come back to Sunday school. I want to come to church. And we closed down the jail ministry. We closed down the public school ministry. We have 14 rest homes we're in. We've not been in one of them. Of course, we're not allowed in, and I understand that. Uh, we have closed down door-to-door -door visitation. We're not permitted to do that in this city. All children's ministries have been closed. Our Sunday school has been closed. We have tried to obey authority. After 11 weeks of that, we have uh, still continued 24 weeks, keep it all closed. But after 11 weeks, we went back into the auditorium temporarily. I was preaching to this empty auditorium every week, every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, other times. And we did that because we wanted to err on the side of safety. Now we have come to the point where this is not a hot spot. We were told that thousands were going to die. There's 2.1 million people in our valley. I didn't want to be responsible for seeing people die because of this disease. And it is a real disease, a virus. It's very real. We understand that. But because it was going to be a hot spot, we obeyed to the letter. But now all of a sudden we have found out that there are not 5,000 or 2,500 people that have died in our area of 2.1 million. We've not had a thousand people perish, or 900, or 800, or 700, or 500. We've not had 400 people perish. We've not had 300 people perish. And by the way, one life, we know that, is valuable. We've had to this date 224 people pass away. 90 plus of those were in rest homes. God bless those people. Died alone. We're not able to visit them as we've not been able to get in the hospitals or anywhere these last 24 weeks. We have done everything possible. We have posted our protocol to come back in here. But yesterday, the county came in. They posted on our doors on Friday that we have to cease and desist. Those words are horrifying to me. That someone could post that a church in America has to cease. I know our mayor has, I believe, tried to be nice to us, and uh, her office has suggested that we just obey, and maybe you have a First Amendment right. Well, absolutely we have a First Amendment right. You, you can't make laws against the church. We have the right to worship, but more than the right from the Constitution, we have a command from God. In the edict that came to us, we have tried to obey what's been written, the protocol. One of the things that's amazing we were cited yesterday for was that we're not permitted to sing. So yesterday morning, a fine of $5,000, and Sunday night, a fine of $5,000, and they're ratcheting everything up. 
This is America. Th to think that a, a person can say, you cannot sing at church. You cannot preach without a mask on. You cannot communicate with people. We tell our people they come in here. They do not congregate. We are social distancing. Every other row is empty. Six feet this way, six feet this way, six feet this way. We have them come in with masks. Many continue to wear their masks during church. But we're not allowed in our building. Now they said, Pastor, you can meet with 60 people outside. Well, we're under fires. I said to our authorities on Saturdays, I spoke, do you realize the air quality, little children and elderly? We, we can. They said, well, you, can't, you, you should not probably meet this week. I can meet with 50, 60 people outside, but we can't sing. This is way out of bounds. The fines are out of bounds. And the fines that will continue for going to the house of God. We've never been bad people in this city. Every mayor that I know has always spoken complimentary of this church. We love the police and they love us. I have a letter on my desk from the chief of police. How great this church in the last two weeks have been to this area. We love the police. We love authority. Our people work. We pay taxes. We're good neighbors. We're, we're trying to do everything possible. We're trying to help poor people. We're trying to help the needy. We're trying to help the people that are sick. So we have a situation here where the county health director said, now I'm in charge of the health and God bless you. You're not elected, but God bless you. I appreciate you. But I'm in charge of the spiritual health of the people of this city in this area. And I've been trying to do it for 45 years. And though the health is very important, of utmost importance, spiritual health is supreme. And because we've been locked out in this county of churches, suicide is up, domestic violence is up, drug addiction is up, homelessness is up, alcoholism is up. We need to get back to worshiping God. I am commanded to worship God. So yesterday, Acts 4 and 5, we heard their threatenings. They said, we command you not to teach or preach in this name. Here they said, we command you not to sing or speak inside a building. Look, I'll go outside. The building's not the issue. It's telling the church what they can do. And then it'd say, okay, you can go outside, but you can have only 60 people. What are we going to do with the thousands of people that are coming? I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. I'm not trying to be cruel. I want to obey authority. But authority, you overstepped. And I plead with you, back off. Open up the spiritual environment of this valley immediately because we're going to see chaos. I'm not threatening that. We're going to create chaos. If you arrested me yesterday, I would go, I go on, I instructed my people, no revolt. And if you arrest me this week, and I know that's a possibility, that's not my desire. My desire is to preach God's word. I thought I'd come to this part of my journey, my life, and just be able to preach and love people and help people and deal with situations. But I am willing to take a stand for my children and my grandchildren. I have 14 grandkids. So my grandkids here yesterday are so worried that Papa was going to be arrested. It's torment to our children in this church. I beg you, please stop. I beg you, look at the stats. Look at the science, as Mr. Governor, you say. There's not a pandemic here. Yes, let's be safe. Let's be careful. But this area needs the church. God bless each of you. Thank you for listening. Amen.